Good evening, viewers of Canadian Mozak. It's a pleasure and honor for us that today we have got a very distinguished team. We have got our, my co-host, our Josephine, and a most distinguished guest, Minister Nina Tangri, who is an associate minister for small business, red tape. Plus, she is our elected MPP from Mississauga Streetsville. We honor and welcome her. And thank you, Nina, in spite of your such a hectic life, and such a hectic duties, you made it to come and honor us. My pleasure. Thank you, Aspi, for inviting me today. Thank you. Most welcome. Thank you very much for coming. So uh, let's all rise for our Canadian national anthem to be, who will be sung by our one and only Josephine Mancini, who is an excellent singer. And it's not, I don't have to make her give a more introduction. She's well recognized and she's she really deserves all the credit. Let's rise. I would like to thank Mr. Aspi for giving me the opportunity to participate, as well as singing the national anthem today for our interview with Ms. Um, Honorable Nina Tangri, who is our um, small business minister in the province of Ontario. I also want to congratulate you for um, this new position that you received, along with being an MPP um, who is elected in the region of Mississauga Street. From the platform of Canadian Mozak, Awas TV, concept of Samina Jabin, anchored by Aswantiar Wadiwala, co hosted by uh, our Katrina Kekoni Sheva, and we have got a lovely guest singer, Josephine Mancini, who is always there to support us. And our most distinguished guest this evening we have is our Honorable Nina Tangri, who is our Minister for Small Business as well as eradication of red tape and MPP from Mississauga Streetsville. We welcome you, Honorable Rona, Nina Tangri. Thank you very much. My first question to you is, first and foremost, let me congratulate you for assuming the office of a small business minister. You really deserve this honor because you belong to a business community since a long time. And prior to that also, prior to this appointment also, you brought so much business to Mississauga and to our riding. And now the responsibility for you is to uh, get the businesses for Ontario. So what would you like to comment on this? How do you feel assuming that you being our minister now? Oh, well, thank you so much, Aspi, for inviting me today. And I really want to thank all of the viewers of Canadian Mosaic for listening in and watching today and for the great work that you're doing uh, to just get out that message to the public and make sure that our voices are all heard and that the right information is getting out. 
But uh, in my role as the uh, Minister of Small Business and Red Tape Reduction, um, what we're doing is we're trying to put together from all the ministries mm. on how we can save businesses and people um, money and also help them uh, make sure that we don't have duplication. So sometimes you have a regulation that's federal, it's provincial, sometimes municipal, regional, and they're duplicating after duplicating. And when you have to keep continuing to file papers over and over again, it takes up and consumes a lot of your time in business. So what we're trying to do and what we have done uh, in our past bills is eliminate some of those regulations, sometimes change them, just to make it easier to do business here in Ontario. In our interview later, we are about to ask you one question. What does Ontario is open for business? So explain to our viewers what does the Premier and you mean by that? And now, uh, how easy it is to establish a business if you are a genuine business person? Absolutely, Aspi. Look, I mean, um, the Premier comes from the business world. I do, uh, Minister of Fidelity. Uh, comes from a marketing background and many many of our caucus members are also business people so we understand um, what it's like to um, open a business to try and grow business and and too often we find that there's barriers in the way too often there's uh, a lot of reasons that you can't open a business and we, we want to make sure that we try to eliminate those barriers yeah. what we had with the previous government unfortunately we lost hundreds of thousands of jobs just because the cost of doing business in Ontario was too high. Our hydro costs were too high, our taxes were too high, and um, they, they chose not to grow here or not to even come here, uh, leaving a lot of people outside, especially of the manufacturing sector. So what we, what we are doing, and we've been very, very successful at, we've managed to attract many businesses to come Great. to Ontario. And, uh, you know, when we talk about being open for business, we really are open for business. And it's not just only about taxes. It's uh, We also talk a lot about um, what it's like to raise a family here in Ontario. I mean, there's no doubt you, myself, many of us here, uh, many of the viewers chose Ontario to be their home. Definitely. And uh, we choose it for many reasons, because there's opportunities, uh, we choose it because it's a safe place to raise your family and there's great jobs. So we want to make sure that we can continue that and ensure that those people who choose Ontario as their home and to raise their family, that they do have those opportunities, whether it's opening your own business or working for someone else. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this with us. Um, I had a question for myself as well. Like, like you, men you um, mentioned that you was... Uh, trying to bring more and more, and more um, businesses to Ontario uh, to boost the employment and to um, better the life of the citizens over here. Uh, have you um, discussed any major um, deals with the companies? Like, have Yeah, so there's been a, a number of them and uh, one of them very early uh, when I f was first elected I met with um, some people from the life sciences sector mm -hmm. and they educated me on life sciences and what it's about and whether it's bringing that new innovative life-saving drug or life-saving treatment, uh, life-altering treatment. And uh, they, they told me about the industry and what it's all about. And there's a company, Roche Canada, it's in my writing and as are many of those of the life science sector. Um, they were looking to expand, uh, looking to have an extra 500 jobs. And we were in competition with the United States and with Ireland. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that competition, uh, they brought in one of their uh, higher people from the Human Resources Department to make that decision. So he came to Canada, obviously. He was actually from Ireland originally and the United States as well. So, you know, Ireland were offering them millions of euros to come there and build. Um, Ohio, uh, United States was offering them a significant amount of infrastructure. In Ontario, we didn't offer them anything except the fact that they have a location already and that we would help them in growing those jobs. So um, they came, they met with me and we met with the Premier mm -hmm. and uh, throughout our conversations, we were able to secure 500 very well-paying jobs right here in Mississauga. So awesome. it's really exciting. And uh, we made that announcement with Rosh last year. Uh, it, it is really exciting. That's just one of many of the uh, the stories that we have of businesses coming here. 
That's Ontario. amazing. Well done. Thank you. No, it's it's amazing that um, you uh, have this power and abilities and open doors to bring a multinational companies into Ontario because they have uh, much bigger capabilities mm -hmm. and uh, opportunities, right, to um, help people and really bring like this big window or open the big window for the employment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Minister, okay, so, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Minister Tangri, would you explain to our viewers what are the difficulties of Ontarians are facing as far as doing business and what you are, are you outlining now as a minister to bring prosperity to our province of Ontario? So there are, there are many ways that we can support our businesses. I mean, the government's responsibility is to help create that environment so businesses can succeed. It's not for the government to have those jobs available, but to help businesses come here or to start. And private sector, Absolutely. encouragement of private Very sector. private sector. So um, one of the areas that we can help uh, new innovative products, we need to help somebody has a great idea or a great solution. We should be able to find a way uh, to help them bring that, whether it's new research, if they're within, for example, a university setting and they've created or invented a product, you know, we should be able to allow them to bring that product, patent it, have that intellectual property, and then also grow that. So sometimes where there's a barrier is investment. So they need investment to, to scale up. So that's something that our government's been working very strongly on in many, many different sectors. And quite frankly, here in Ontario, the best thing that we have is our people. Our people, the human resources, the talent, talent. And those that are graduating from our schools, colleges and universities. We really do have a great uh, white sector of very, very great graduates coming out of our, like I said, our colleges, universities and schools. So that I think is our biggest ability and our biggest attraction. And we must not forget our Canadians are hardworking people, law-abiding and tax-paying citizens. Exactly, Very humble. exactly. And that's key. Um, when you have a community that's law-abiding, uh, that really does attract investment. We respect our law. Team. That is the main thing. The success of Very Canada is we respect our law, we respect our federation, mm -hmm. and we are always there and you know how we respect our flag. Absolutely. पूरे ऑन्टेरियो में लाखों लोग अपनी कोविड-19 की वैक्सीन हासिल कर चुके हैं। हेल्थ कनाडा की मंजूरशुदा तमाम वैक्सीन्स महफूज और हस्पतालों, डॉक्टर्स के दफातर, फार्मेसीज और आवामी वैक्सीनेशन के मुखामात पर हासिल हैं। अपना किरदार अदा करें, अपनी वैक्सीन हासिल करें। 300 जुबानों में मदद के लिए पाकिस्तान का सबसे मशहूर एक्स्ट्रा लॉन्ग ग्रेन मुगल बास मते राइस अवेलेबल इन बोथ वाइट एंड सेला होम डिलीवरी इज अवेलेबल सब्जेक्ट टू मिनिमम ऑर्डर एंड रेडियस आल्सो अवेलेबल एट योर नेबरहुड फ्रेश को मजीद मालूमात के लिए आज ही कांटेक्ट करें 514-6630-480 पर या ऑर्डर करें हमारे फेसबुक से बनाएं ये रमजान और भी खास Mughal Basmati Kesa, the premium choice for premium taste. KK Travel believe in providing everyone the first class customer service. We take care not only for your etiquette but dignity and respect as well. We are available for you anytime on WhatsApp, even while you are in Pakistan or any other destination. KK Travels guarantee lowest prices and are open to price match any airline. We are KK Travels under supervision of Gas Khan at 905-367-9433 or visit www.gaskhantravels.com This is a great offer of 2020 where we are giving 0% financing for your mind and your mind. Free winter tires and with it we are giving oil change. वो भी उम्र भर के लिए अभी आएं और इस लाजवाब ऑफर का लुत्फ लें जल्दी करें आपका खुशामदीद हमारे आउटलेट में जो कि 60 क्विंट्स प्ले ड्राइव एट इंटरसेक्शन क्लोज टू हाईवे 27 एंड रेक्सडेल ऑपोजिट टू वुडबैन रेस ट्रैक जल्द से जल्द इस ऑफर का लुत्फ लें आज ही कॉल करें सुनील अग्रवाल को 647703018 
Minister Changri, um, share a little bit to our with our viewers how um, what does this one window plan means to set up the business here in Ontario, and um, how long does it take an application to be processed, and what you as a government can do to lend the hand of help. And to I them. would add that reduce bureaucracy as much as possible. Bureaucracy is everywhere around yeah. the world. It's not only uh, in our provincial government or the city or federal, it's everywhere. So try to reduce bureaucracy. That is will be our main attraction to bring more businesses and helpful to our people. Yeah, and, and, and you know what, you touched right on there. I mean, we call it the ease of doing business. Business. So, you know, first, if you want to set up a new business, there's, you need to be able to, um, uh, you know, you register your business first. That's online. It's very quick. Uh, you can do it. You can have a lawyer or an accountant put it together. Um, once you have a business number, then you can have a payroll number if that's needed. And uh, that, that process is, is very quick. And then it depends on the, well, that, that can be done online uh, mm -hmm. within, uh, that's very right quick. away. Great. And uh, very quickly you'll have what you call a business number. Mm -hmm. um, so once that's done, depending, of course, on the kind of business that you have. Um, so if you, if you go into sales of a specific product, then you need to bring that product, either you're building that product, if it's Canadian, especially if it's Ontario made, which we really do, uh, you know, we encourage people to do. But if it's a product that you're importing, then that can take time to bring that product here. If it's a very um, <clears throat> unique product, that also may take time um, to produce, right? So uh, when we look at all the ways to do that, so getting yourself up and running, and if you need space um, for much that's happening because of the pandemic, of course, it's, we're looking at a lot of things virtually. Um, one thing that our government has done and we've really done very well is we've worked with what we call the Digital Main Street Program. So where our government gives $2,500 for you to have an online presence. Totally. So especially through the pandemic, it's been very, very difficult for many businesses. So we've been encouraging them to have an online presence so that the people can purchase their, their goods and products mm -hmm. online. And uh, that's been very, very successful. So successful that uh, my ministry now just added an additional $10 million into that program so we can actually branch out to a lot more companies so they can also uh, participate in this. So I'm really excited about that. It's something that we just announced last week. Mm -hmm. uh, Minister Tangri, I would like to congratulate our provincial government and every one of you for speeding up the COVID vaccine. We have done fantastically well. As of today, about 80% of our population, adult eligible population has got one dose. And our ratio for even two doses is about 60%. And even our children from 12 to 17 are getting vaccinated. Yes. So I really wish to congratulate because sometime back when I took your interview, a few weeks back only, I was inquiring about why the COVID we are lacking behind. But now when we see the figures, the world figures, the major countries like Japan is far, far behind. Germany is mm -hmm. far behind. Russia is far behind. And Canada is much ahead of us. And we are really thankful to our federal as well as the provincial government, the premier, all the ministers for doing a real hard job. We are winding up happily the vaccine clinics, the mass vaccination clinics, and we hope that we all have a lovely summer and, and even the fall we all enjoy, which we, we miss for nearly two years. Absolutely. And the province has also undergone a very, very financial strain mental strain and various issues were there. So would you like to throw some light on it, how hard you all work, how our Premier worked? Day and night, we used to see him daily, yeah. but he was there, the man on the spot. I would say our Premier is man on the spot. And he is. I mean, and uh, for those of you who have, ever, who have met our Premier, he's an extremely down-to-earth, a very humble gentleman who uh, he really does work around the clock. And when, the, when COVID uh, came to Ontario and... Uh, we knew very little about what was happening. So we really needed to understand what is COVID, um, how do we mitigate the risk as best possible, which of course was where we had to have the state home orders. Uh, we also had to, uh, you know, mandate masks. And uh, we very quickly uh, closed schools. That was critical. We didn't want to- Right decisions sure, were taken. Absolutely, we had to make sure that our children were safe. Uh, we closed down the legislature very quickly and uh, the Premier wanted to make sure that he was at the forefront um, giving out that message each and every day to all of the public and once again I do want to thank 
uh, Canadian Mosaic and all of our media for, you know, making sure that his presence was known uh, so that he could get that message out to uh, the public to stay safe, stay home, save lives. Because that was so critical. And, you know, in the very beginning of the pandemic, when we worked with the federal government, our provincial government, municipal and regional governments, we all came together. Uh, we all understood that we had the only way we were going to get through COVID was to work together. It was and a time for unity. Absolutely. I mean, politics has no place. No place. Uh, there was no this politics. Pandemic, this, you know, COVID doesn't care what political stripe Maybe. you are. And uh, so it was critical that we came together and we did. Um, so from the federal government, from procuring the vaccines, from us getting the vaccines and making the difficult decisions of who gets the vaccine first. So, you know, absolutely, I think it was critical to get them into our long-term care homes and for our aged population and then working our way down. And then the decision to whether to have the older age group have their second dose or have more people have their first dose. So most countries, what they went with was to get everybody double vaccinated uh, at, by age. We chose to try and get everybody, everybody. plus and with at least why. one dose so that we ha all had some immunity. And I think, to your point, uh, that's what worked very, very well. That's how we've been able to, um, in some ways, be better than a lot of other countries, because we have more people that have at least one dose. And I think that was so critical. Now we're getting most people with their second dose. And uh, we're, we're very, very optimistic that very soon we'll be able to move out of step three and uh, have God a really. very normal uh, life, uh, as normal as I guess it could be. Um, but I do say in the meantime, we're not out of this yet. So I do hope um, everybody, you know, still, we, we know you want to meet your families. We know, uh, you know, we want to start socializing once again, uh, but just continue to do it safely. If, you, if you're outside and you can't physically distance or indoors, please continue to wear a mask uh, for now. Uh, the best way for us to get our kids back in class in September yeah, definitely. Uh, is that we all are very careful over the summer. We need to make sure that we protect our children um, you know, it's summer, we all want to be out there, but just continue if you cannot, if you cannot physically distance, if you're in close proximity, just continue to wear a mask for now. I think that's our best and safest way right now. So Minister Tangri, we thank you for coming, taking out time for us on behalf of Awas TV edited me, Canadian Mosaic, myself, my co-host, and even Josephine, and all the crew members, I'm grateful to you. Keep coming. Uh, tell us all what all is happening in a provincial government and what all you plan to do. Would you give a, some concluding remark to, to remarks to our viewers? Absolutely, Aspri. And I, once again, I want to thank you, Katrina. It's Josephine, always a pleasure. Um, for what you do and Samina and the team here behind the scenes that are putting this together. Uh, as I said earlier, getting the message out to the, to the general public, making sure we don't have too much misinformation. Uh, there's a lot of information that's come out, especially throughout the pandemic. Um, but we really are making our way through this. I do want to thank each and every one of you out there for going and getting vaccinated. And once we're all fully vaccinated, we can continue to have some kind of a, a life of normalcy. Uh, I think that's what we're all really looking forward to. Uh, we know there's a lot of issues still globally. Uh, many countries still are not have not vaccinated enough people. So I think once now we're seeing that we're coming through this, we should be in a position to assist and help other countries also get to the same position that we are. Um, but on the small business front, I just want to let everyone know that uh, yes, we here in Ontario, we're very much open for business. Uh, we just uh, secured uh, a number of companies. I was on a, a convention in India a couple of years ago where we were able to secure a number of businesses to come and open up here. We are very good in foreign direct investment. So uh, if, you have, if you've got that innovative, creative, great new idea, we want to hear from you and uh, we're here to support you. We have uh, the ability to have business to business meetings with companies globally. We have uh, our agent generals located in a number of offices around the world uh, and we're here to support you. And uh, if, if your business succeeds, all of us here on Ontario succeed. So thank you very much. Thank you, Nina, for coming to Avas TV in our show and hope to see you again. So uh, viewers, good night, everybody till our next episode. God bless Canada and God bless all of you. Thank you.